Thank and you. with that, I would like to present our next um, presenter. We have Dr. Kishore Ushiraju, who will be presenting his research on ART-008, Design, Evaluation, Automation, and Optimization. And with that, I will pass it on to Kishore. Good afternoon. Today, I would like to present our research on the design evaluation automation and optimization dashboards for uh, armament and ammunition packaging. Uh, my co-investigators on this project are uh, Professor Manochari and Dr. Chen Yu uh, from uh, Mechanical Engineering. I am uh, Kishore Pochiraju from uh, Mechanical Engineering as well. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> DevCom Armament Center collaborators were uh, Ms. Lisa Aversa and uh, Jason B. Rano. So our sponsor customer for uh, this project uh, has been the Logistics Research and Engineering Directorate, LRED, from uh, DevCon Arm Armament Center of uh, the Picatinny Arsenal. The uh, project objectives were uh, create a visual data-driven dashboard of uh, package designs. So the LRED group has, uh, has been designing and perfecting the uh, ammunition container packages made with both uh, metal and plastics and fiber filled plastics. So our uh, main goal for this project is to create a design dashboard. So you can look at the performance of the designs from a cost, cost performance and durability perspective. The, uh, uh, the project entail development of uh, metrics uh, designed for X metrics uh, for the containers. Uh, so these may uh, include uh, cost uh, type of estimation, uh, performance estimates based on their drop uh, impact performance and process time, how long do they take uh, to process? Uh, we focused on uh, uh, the, uh, we focused on the uh, uh, evaluation from a, a manufacturing perspective using the injection molding uh, manufacturing process. So most of the uh, uh, designs that we checked had injection molding as their uh, basic uh, manufacturing process. Now the idea for us is uh, uh, to help create uh, uh, some kind of filters and comparison views between various designs. So uh, the designer uh, gets uh, performance information uh, before embarking on a new designs. They can view how the old designs or, or the existing designs behave and, the, and looking at the performance of that. So our aim was to evaluate uh, the uh, uh, performance of, uh, of uh, designs with, uh, uh, with DFX analysis that are bound inside the dashboard um, that will enable uh, searching and sorting through the, through the designs available in the database. So we also wanted to enable tracking of design changes. We wanna know, uh, we're gonna have a mechanism in the dashboard that will keep a trace of uh, why designs changed, what requirements drove what design changes. And also we want to enable trade-off analysis and design optimizations uh, from, uh, from uh, a corpus of existing designs. So, so the, data, the dashboard will con contain a database of uh, several existing designs through which uh, a good start point for a new design can come through. So the... Uh, uh, the project has seen the development of a, a, a dashboard system uh, that we named PAD. A PAD is a Packaging Analysis and Design Dashboard. And uh, PAD essentially has three components in it. Uh, there is a user interface, that's the human interface with the interfaces that uh, uh, designers or analysts can look at uh, uh, the corpus of designs 
that are in the database and and look at the relative performance of them in terms of cost performance and uh, in terms of size as well uh, we one can one can look at uh, uh, so one can search and sort through the through the existing designs and and clone an existing design to form the basis for a new design so to give it a good start point for an for a new design. So PAD system has a user interface that you see here on the uh, left side. Uh, it has graphical views along with uh, and text-based text views. And uh, embedded inside the dashboard is a computational engine uh, that has an impact response model. It has a cost model. It has a geometry model. And it has a process model. The process model will basically give you how long it will it take to produce the container using, at this point, the injection molding process. It also has a built-in uh, SQL database, uh, which holds all the project's metadata and all the material data. So we are also looking at uh, swapping the materials in the design to what if analysis if you swap the materials. The basic software itself is a full stack implementation. Uh, it has a server-side computational engine uh, that uh, tracks all the parameters, tracks all the information elements, uh, and, and creates a computational graph between them. So if you change something, it propagates. If you change an input parameter value, it'll propagate that throughout the, uh, throughout the data, uh, throughout the database to update what the, uh, uh, how the performance cost and other metrics we track change with it. Uh, we have a, a, a way to customize the, uh, uh, customize the models. So we can basically incorporate uh, models built in any language or even Excel sheets. We can take them in to, uh, uh, to, uh, into the dashboard and evaluate them in the background in the computational engine. Uh, we actually, in the, in, during the, this project period, we uh, uh, developed uh, customized uh, models for uh, for uh, Devcom uh, for uh, uh, for their packaging uh, applications. So I'll, I will I will go through that in this uh, presentation. Uh, the database that we use is a as a SQL database. It's a open source database that stores all the data uh, pertaining to the projects. Uh, and uh, manipulates the uh, we can manipulate the data by by uh, uh, sending queries to the database. The user interface is a tear off uh, implementation with uh, HTML that uh, uh, that we can very quickly customize, which has HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript that uses to produce the interface, the front end interface for it. So these two components reside on the server and. Uh, uh, and the user interface resides locally on a, on a browser. So in terms of PAD, the main dashboard uh, essentially shows um, uh, the global view of all the designs that are available in the database. Uh, this particular database I'm showing is a demonstration database. It does not contain any real data. It shows you the, uh, uh, it shows you the um, uh, features of uh, the dashboard. Uh, on the top level, when, when a user logs in, uh, the user is able to see uh, the costs by uh, the, the projects by cost. So you can see the unit manufacturing costs for how they vary with respect to various choices in this uh, uh, various projects in the in the in the in the database. So you have uh, the thin HTPE con containers, the cheapest container, uh, and then the more expensive nylon. Uh, thick nylon container is uh, is almost like eight dollars twenty five cents on the uh, in terms of the cost. So what it does on the main view is pull out the six best designs that uh, that the that the um, data has. Now we are only showing four because we only have four designs in this demonstration database. So it's just showing uh, showing uh, four, but up to six designs can bubble up to the top of the dashboard to show you what the six best designs are. The purpose of this is if a designer wants to start off with a cost target, 
So let's say I want to design something under $5. I know that these are the two possibilities I can start with. These are the two designs that are under $5 that I can, I can start with. Now, we also know that based on all the designs that are there in the database, what are the possible cost estimates? The cost can go from you know, $2 to $8 are the, are the best cost solutions. And the middle uh, uh, design is the best performance. What is the impact of force that it can tolerate before failure uh, that is showing here. So all four designs here have uh, uh, a very high impact tolerance in terms of the, uh, uh, they have about 5,000 pound uh, tolerance in terms of how much impact, impact force they can take. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the view here. So if you want to sort them by performance, you can sort them by performance and look at them. And designs by size. This is basically the container sizes. So this is the, this is the smallest container you have, and this is the largest containers you have in the, in the design. So that's a top level dashboard view that you can look at to see how the, uh, how the containers are, uh, uh, are, are, what type of containers are there in the, in the dashboard itself. The user can also uh, search and compare various designs. Uh, so we have a filtering sorting uh, mechanism. Uh, so uh, each project is listed by its type. So you can, you can give a project type. So of all the, if you want to do the plastic containers, you click on the plastic here and it'll show the two plastic containers or how many other plastic containers you have. And you can unselect some of them. So you can only select uh, specific projects to, to compare them to see how they how the sizes compare how the performances compare and how the designs how the how the uh, costs compare between the two uh, between the two of them so it gives you an ability to sort by type and also to uh, to select uh, of, uh, designs that you wish to compare to uh, to to do uh, to, to do analysis on uh, if there is an existing design or that meets your meets your requirements, or if there is a, uh, if uh, 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 if you if you need to identify the the best seed design, the best starting design, you can start from we can start from here. So this is the searching and sorting view. So the two top level views are global view that uh, gives you the entire view of the entire database. That's the top the top level view, and then you have the uh, uh, ability to filter, sort, and compare any or two arbitrary, any, any number of arbitrary designs that, uh, that you wish to compare in the, in the comparison view. Now, drilling down a little bit, uh, the, uh, the uh, design data that we actually capture uh, are geometry, materials, process, costing. So these are all various domains of the design that we capture. Uh, this user is able to uh, either specify uh, a rough bounding box. So if you're early, early in the design phase, you just want to do conceptualization of these containers, how big the container should be. If I have a container of certain size, what is this total? Uh, what is the estimated cost for it? Or how long does it take to produce one of them using injection molding, uh, this will help you uh, to do the geometry definition. So you have two ways of doing the geometry definition. At the conceptual stage, you can just enter the length, width, height, and thickness of it. So it'll just make a rectangular box approximation for it, and then it'll uh, it'll, it'll compute the volume weights and uh, it'll compute the, the, the cycle time for it. Or you can, uh, if you have a computer design, a CAD file, uh, you, you make that into, a, the user makes that into a, um, into a, uh, a stereolithography file and then drops it into, into our uh, dashboard. And what the dashboard does is it takes the stereolithography file and then it'll extract the lengths, widths, and heights and estimates the thickness for what is the rough uh, is thickness for it and estimates the geometry parameters from the, from the given geometry file and uses that for the further processing on that. So, um, uh, so we have two ways of doing this. If you don't have the information on the full geometry of the container, you can just give the uh, envelope Envelope details for it. If if not, you can give the uh, you can give a uh, uh, if you can give the full 
uh, geometric detail for it, and then we'll we'll process the geometric detail to to determine what the prop what the what parameters that we need from it. Now we can do a. a a global dashboard level what if analysis. So one of the things that uh, we were asked is uh, we want to quickly mark up a container and, and look at what the uh, and and with a particular material and see what the uh, what the costs are going to be. Or you want to change uh, you want to know uh, how many do you have to make uh, to amortize the tool that's required for the injection molding. So we have the top level uh, dashboard view that will let you change the, the geometry of it, right? So if you, if you have a quick uh, way of uh, uh, changing the length, width, and, uh, and thickness for it, you can enter the length, width, and thickness. We have a few materials that uh, uh, we have in the database. You can switch the material, and then you can enter the production volume. Now, what you're doing is, uh, in here, you're saying that you disconnect the uh, analysis from the, from the CAD file, and you want to do what if analysis, and you can just put the values in here. And the values, it'll take the values, and it'll basically compute uh, various metrics from that particular, for that particular design. So it'll compute uh, the part weight, so it'll give you that what is should be the what will be the weight of the part if you if you do it with that particular thickness, it'll compute the mold cost. So I'll get into it a little more. Uh, it'll compute the machining time for the whole mold to make that particular part, and it'll come. It's it's going to compute what the estimated cost for the mold is. Right, uh, this cost cost is based on time and and cost per time. So we we'll, we give you. It's an estimate for the cost for the for the mold cost. This is still in beta uh, version, so you'll see numbers like this. But you can we can round this up to uh, about twenty eight thousand dollars is the estimated cost for the uh, for a single cavity mold. It'll give you a, a part cycle time to make one part of that particular size. It's going to take about one hundred and ninety seconds, about three three plus minutes for it to 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 fill it and then to uh, to cool it. It'll take that that kind of time. That'll let you estimate how many you can make per day uh, using a single machine. So you'll you'll know what the uh, what the process cycle time is. And uh, for ten thousand production volume, we amortize the cost. We have various cost components uh, that I'll just I'll go to go through that next. So in terms of uh, the cost components, we add up all the cost components and divide it by the total batch volume. So we get the Total cost. So it costs about seven dollars to make each one container for this particular uh, part. We also have a rough impact model. What if you drop this thing? What is the estimated impact force? We are looking at the estimated impact force to be about five thousand one forty nine uh, uh, pounds on the on the on the uh, uh, on the. Uh, um, on the corner, if you drop it, drop it in the in the corner of that. So you can do very quick uh, what if analysis uh, by just changing the inputs, changing the geometry, changing the material, changing the production volume, and you can look at what the uh, what the impact on that is. So we not only do that, we give a visual view of the design space, uh, so we uh, uh, we can. Uh, produce some plots. So if you're at thickness point two, what if you increase the thickness? How does the weight change? Uh, what if you uh, uh, increase the thickness? How does the cycle time change? How does the cost change? How does the weight change? If you change the height, how does the depth versus weight? How does the how does the uh, uh, the weight of the container change? So you can do a, a, a exploration of design space by by selecting any two parameters, and it'll it'll give you what the uh, what the uh, variability of the of the driving parameter with respect to the driven parameter in, in a very visual in a very visual format now most of these uh, plots are uh, queryable i have a small video that i'm going to show at the end and when we uh, when you when we query the uh, 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 plots you can actually see all the numbers that uh, uh, that uh, that are predicted by the system now, in terms of manufacturing costs, the unit manufacturing costs, are very, it's a simple additive model. We have a, a table of uh, breakdown of costs, so you can see the breakdown of costs. So this is nothing cast in stone. If you have a different model for, for your, your system, that you can, this is basically the bill of materials that we pulled through, and we can, we can display that as a cost per part 
in terms of how the how it's uh, how it's added up to to become uh, the system level cost at this particular point. In terms of drop tests uh, during this uh, project period, uh, we set up a couple of uh, uh, models. We also worked collaboratively with to, uh, with uh, DevCom to uh, come up with uh, good ways of uh, estimating impact performance. So if you see uh, the typical uh, ways in which the impact performance is tested is by dropping the uh, box or the container onto a, uh, onto a, a rigid surface and checking for failure, whether it has cracked, uh, whether it has uh, developed any kind of dents and, uh, and uh, if, there, if it has cracked, it's no longer useful because uh, moisture penetrates into the, into the container and, uh, and degrades the ammunition. So that's what we are looking at. So typically a three feet drop height is used and you drop the loaded pack onto the, onto the, onto the rigid surface. So we have done high resolution modeling on that. So it's a corner drop, you see a corner drop here. And when you drop it, you typically see the stress develop uh, in a few milliseconds and then come down. And the force on this corner also develop with respect to the, with respect to the timing and, and, and with respect to the time uh, of drop with, with, with respect to the impact. Of the uh, with respect to the impact of the uh, uh, of the container onto the hard surface, so we mark two metrics. One is the height; it's the total force. The other is the duration of the impact. So those are the two controlling variables uh, that will uh, let us know how much stress is put on the material. It's based on the contact, the peak contact force, as well as the time of the impact. That's how much energy is going into the material. And we want to know whether it breaks it or not. So that's those are the two parameters that we track for performance of these containers. The containers could be dropped on the edges, or they could be dropped on the entire corner. So we have we track uh, either of the two. Uh, a thicker container uh, is a uh, uh, the behavior is uh, is different. It's a lot more. The impact time is a lot more, and the impact force is a lot less in this particular uh, in this particular. Now, uh, the DevCom has started uh, uh, doing a lot of tests. A typical test takes place like that. The box is kept into a, a test rig and it is uh, dropped. So you can see that it's dropped from three foot uh, distance. So as soon as uh, uh, it hits, it hits a force plate in the bottom and the force plate provides what the maximum impact is there on that. So we correlate our models when we do these tests, we basically correlate the models with what we get from the impact testing. We also have a pressure sensing uh, film put in the corners. So when you put the pressure sensing film on the corners, we actually know how evenly distributed the pressure is during the contact. We all can also see what the pressure correlation is. We can bring this data into uh, the dashboard. So it remains, uh, it remains attached to the, uh, uh, to the container design. So we capture the, uh, the, the experimental data set in terms of how the, uh, what the mode is, and then uh, uh, various uh, uh, settings for the drop test and what the observations are, what are the peak force observed, what is the lowest force observed, the number of peaks observed, all that are recorded in the, in the, in the dashboard. So we have, a, we have a way of comparing how two containers behaved in terms of uh, their performance. Uh, PAD allows uh, storage of both uh, the data or the pictures and the videos so we can drop it into the dashboard. Uh, so for future comparisons, you can look at, uh, you can look at how the uh, uh, individual containers behaved and that data is stored inside the, inside the, inside the dashboard. So what you see on the screen today uh, in front of you uh, is the main dashboard view of the, uh, of PAD. So you can see that uh, uh, the dashboard shows you a global view on the top level uh, of all the designs that are in the database and that are in the dashboard. 
and sorts them by cost, which is the leftmost uh, view, uh, sorts them by performance. This is the estimated impact force based on a simple model that we have and sorts them by size. Right now, all the designs are the same size. And if you look at the uh, uh, prime N 100 STL nylon six unfilled at uh, 0.375 thickness, it's uh, 13.27. So what uh, the top level dashboard views will do is um, fetch the top, five, top six, in fact, if you have more than, uh, more than uh, six projects, it'll It'll pick the top six uh, designs and then uh, it plots them to see how the costs are going. So the topmost one is the lowest cost. Now, if you hit show on any of these projects, so if I go and hit uh, show on my template project, uh, I can see the entire project uh, uh, data that is in, the, in that particular project in a, in, a, uh, in a holistic form. This is created as if uh, you can print this. So it'd be nice if you can just right click on it and print it so you have a uh, you have a report that comes in as to what the project is having. So that's how it's uh, kind of designed. Now, the basic structure of a project is the project is going to have many domains. If you see that for this, for, for, uh, for example, in this uh, template project, I have a production domain, I have a geometry domain, materials domain, tooling domain, processing and manufacturing domain, costing domain. And then we have the drop, drop test performance. This is the drop test impact force model. And then we have a top level global dashboard. This dashboard domain is there in every project. And uh, if you want to do global changes, like change the thickness, change the uh, material, you can do it right here. So the entire project sees the, uh, the changes that you have made. So if you want to make some tweaks to the project at the global level, make, make decisions, you would use the dashboard uh, domain. If you want to look at the geometry, uh, basically you go and look at the geometry. That's the geometry of the uh, of the of the container that we have so so you can look at the container so we can store the stl file so you can look at the geometry of it and then uh, we can do a pro we can process it so if you look at uh, we can actually uh, pad can actually go into the stl file uh, get things like a volume so it automatically gets what the volume of the part is the material is you can get the package dimensions so it checks the, uh, uh, so it's about 12 by 7.25 by six. So we can get the package dimensions from there. So you look at the materials choice list. Right now in our database, we created about five materials. So we, put, we pulled about five materials that uh, were referred to in the past by, by uh, CCDC. And then we've kind of put those data in there. So once we, uh, once you choose this material name, uh, the system automatically goes into our database and updates the price that is loaded in the database, the density, diffusivity, the mold temperature, the modulus, and then the uh, material name. It just pulls the values in here. Uh, again, in this level, we disconnected the material density that's pulled from the, um, uh, from the database to the material mass density that we are actually using in inch per inch uh, in pounds per inch cube, uh, because if you want to add some fiber to it that changes the density, you can just change the density value and it reflects in the cost and reflects in the cycle time of the of the part. So uh, we, we have not full, we're not fully dependent on the data to be available in the database. But once the data is fully available, uh, we can just make the connection and, and it can it can look up. So the user uh, do not need to basically put that information in. So the information comes from the databases. And then we have a tooling chart. So tooling is a bunch of calculations. Uh, tooling, you can set the number of cavities, number of for the mold tool. And we have a, a, an empirical um, model that will compute the tool cost. So based on what we have given here, uh, essentially you, you will set the tool, tool cost. So if you want to tune the tool, You'll come here to put all the values on that we are asking you to input. So we have the tooling. Uh, so tooling has a tool information, processing and manufacturing. Uh, essentially, we will uh, uh, set the uh, uh, various timings. Uh, it'll, it has a uh, cooling model and an injection model. So essentially, it'll give you the injection time, give you the cooling time based on the part thickness and how the part is uh, uh, how the part is reacting and how long does the cycle take to 
build this part. So we have an estimated cycle time for the for. The. So here you see the uh, the costing uh, of the uh, of the project. Uh, you can see the the cost dependence on the production volume. So if we, if you look at this, uh, as long as we can, we have about if you want to bring it down to about ten ten dollar range, so you need about okay, you need about nine thousand parts between eight thousand and nine thousand. If you want to bring it down to uh, to about ten dollars, right? So that's the utility of this. And then you want to see uh, manufacturing cost versus thickness. You can see that there is basically from 0.1 through 0.25, the cost doesn't increase a lot. The thickness has no dependence, not not quite quite that much. And then the, the thickness starts to come into play. Uh, the fixed costs for for doing the tooling and all that uh, essentially dominate uh, for for low thicknesses. And then you have the larger thicknesses. You have the you have the material costs come into play. <clears throat> So in conclusion, uh, we created a dashboard for uh, design evaluations and analysis called PAD. Uh, PAD has an extensible computational engine to incorporate models uh, to classify, search, and sort through designs. Uh, has a general purpose database to store metadata and design data. And it has a customizable user interface that uh, enables you to do uh, design for X evaluations on existing designs or view stored uh, design evaluations. Uh, we have uh, three modules that we have provided as a part of ARC008, uh, cost analysis, uh, process cycle time analysis, and impact performance analysis. Uh, we have the current version, which I would term as the alpha version of PAD hosted at Stevens and uh, DevCom Armament Sensor. Our Armament Center has uh, access to uh, the, uh, the dashboard and they are currently evaluating it. Uh, thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sure. I don't see any questions. Um, we'll just give everyone else a minute to see if anything else pops up on the screen. Okay. Um, appreciate all your good work. That's very interesting. Thank you.